right? And so today I want to title this because we're in Players and Pretenders. Have you loved this? Players and Pretenders. Today, I'm going to title this, My Delay is Not Denial. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, oh, I'm back. They're like, oh, girl, I heard this before. Right? Because we're the queen of I, 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 I am not ever in the next 10 minutes. Okay. Right? My de- delay is not denial. I want to go from 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 10. 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 10. And we're going to talk about today a pretender and a player that lived in the same house. (gasps) That some of y'all work next door in the cubicle to this person. Some of y'all were raised by this person. (laughs) Oh, God. But I'm going to make you feel better because there's always a reason why you've encountered the things you've encountered. And it was for such a time as this. Stop wasting your testimony. Well, Lord knows I've been tea to everybody. Everybody talking about my tea. Well, they didn't realize that your tea was your testimony. Right? Listen, let's talk about this. There was a man named Elkanah who lived in Ramai in the region of Zuf, in the hill country of Ephraim. He was a son of Jehoram, son of Eluhu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, of Ephraim. Why? Just why? Can y'all hear that, mama? Rama, Elkanah, Jehoram, Tohua, Eluhua, get your butt in this house. They, listen, son of Zuf, of Ephraim, Elkanah, had two wives, Hannah and Pina. Pina had children, but Hannah did not. Living in the same house, I'm building you a story. I'm building you a story. Each year, Elkanah would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of heaven's armies at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were the two sons of Eli, Ophani and Phinehas. On the days Elkanai presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to Pina and each of her children. And though he loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. Y'all, I ain't even, I ain't, I'm, listen, I was, I was studying this sermon getting mad for her because you know that's how we women are. I was like, what? It ain't her fault. I mean, I'm talking back to the story. She can't have kids, so she only gonna get half. So Pina would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year, it was the same. Pina would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. That's her husband. He would say, Hannah, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? Duh. You only gave me half. I'm I'm answering for her. Boy, bye. Bye. Don't you see she sees she ain't getting what he... Right. I go straight up savage. He goes, why are you eating? Why are you so downhearted? Is it just because you don't have children? This next part. You have me. Ain't that enough? Having me, isn't that better than having 10 sons? Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli, the priest, was sitting at his customary place behind the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. Honey, listen to me. When a woman of God 
get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, we don't need an audience. We don't need no makeup. We don't need no, 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 no enforcement. When we get sick and tired, that's, that's why the enemy makes you get worn out because you ain't got strength to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, but Hannah. Hannah went in to prayer and she made a vow. She said, oh Lord, I can hear her right now. Oh, she got that grumble. Oh Lord of heaven armies. If you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. And he will be yours for an entire lifetime. And guess what, y'all? Guess what happened? Huh? What happened? He gave her Samuel. But how long does she have to go through this before she saw this miracle manifestation? She had to be picked on for a while. Why? Because she was getting her testimony. There ain't nothing like being crushed. Y'all, there ain't nothing like walking through hell and laying in your bed at night and crying and people picking on you and people believing what other people are saying, what the penis are saying about you. And the pretender looks favored while the player is getting nothing got to feel this woman not only can she not produce back in those days when you couldn't give somebody a kid that's what a woman was for to birth life and it says in the word of God that that Jesus closed her womb closed her womb and yet Hannah gonna have boy girl boy girl girl boy girl what what and mean as a snake And this woman had to go sit in a place where she couldn't help it. Some of y'all are here. Yours might not be having a kid, but it's being left after 38 years of marriage. It's raising, yes, so you can amen me, you walked it. You gave and you gave and you gave. You served and you were selfless. Only to lay in your bed at night and say, God, where are you? I did everything right. And where are you in my situation? I am here to assure you as long as you are on the path of righteousness. Even though there are people who are prettier than you, have a better background than you, even, uh, listen, they even got more friends than you. They dress better than you. They're more beautiful than you. Listen, if you are right before God, if you keep your heart right, this is where he gets us, ladies, in our hearts. He hurts our hearts. The enemy comes in and gets our heart posture because if we get cold, we don't know how to go and travail. Our power is in travail. Our power is in travail. Our power is when we get sick and tired. When you don't know where your kid is. When you don't know what's going to happen next. When you can't control the outcome. That's when God steps in and God will always, always restore if your heart stays right and my question to you today maybe just maybe the reason God isn't opening the doors like I'm talking about today is because he's trying to get your heart right you did it right you were faithful and you were handed something you couldn't help it was out of your control and now you're paying for it you could sit at the country club all those people, all those friends, that the minute you got divorced, you can never walk in that place again. You were at that job for 38 years. You gave and gave only for them to remove you and walk you out by your arm. This is real. This is Hannah. It's real. God will always vindicate 
the ones that keep their hearts right. And if it ain't happened yet, it's because he's busy working the details out behind the scenes. You hear me? Here's what I pray for Limitless. That we have a bunch of men and women in this place that know how to hit the throne room of heaven. That we are not moved by what's happening around us. That we don't let what's happening around us get in us. Pina had children. She had sons and daughters. While Hannah was desperate for just one. So what do you do when things are going well for your adversaries? What do you do when it seems like you take one step forward and all the steps back? What do you do when you're a player but the pretender in your life seems to be getting all the favor? Here was Hannah, desperate for one child while Pina had four without ever praying for a child. You need to tell yourself this right now out loud. There is a reason for my delay. Come on, say it. Come on, come on, come on, man of God. Come on, woman of God. There's a reason for my delay, delay, and it is not denial. There's so many lessons that we can learn in this story. Here's number one. Here's a lesson that we get out of this story. You can have emotion, but don't let your emotion have you. Don't let your emotion have you. There's nothing wrong in being emotional, but there's everything wrong if your emotions are consuming you. You gotta ask yourself, am I operating out of pain from my past? Y'all, this is something I have to ask myself every day because I am a pastor. I have to ask myself, God, am I feeling this because of something from my past? Don't let my past creep into my future because I'm a woman and we feel don't let what they did to me get in me so that I walk through life guarded and I can't be used of you because I can't go where you want me to go because I'm guarded. Listen, Elk and I and his family were devout servants of the Lord, worshipers of God, people who fear God and reverence him. They attended this, this, this big worship service, like our worship service around here. They would, they would go to this every year. It's called Shallow. And at Shallow, it's a place where they situate themselves and they just seek the face of God. I don't know how far their home was from Shallow, but it must have been some distance. Yet they did not let the distance dampen them. So on the outside, it looked like everything was great. They had no idea that Hannah was grieving the way she was grieving because now we're so used to being able to hide everything through filters. They had some sort of filters back then, whether it was just faking it and faking it till you make it, but they had filters. Going to Shiloh, worshiping the Lord, and many of us need to learn some lessons from Zeal and the determination of this family to go for worship, especially Hannah. She worshiped when she really had no reason to worship. Hannah, who seemed not to be getting anything in return, she worshiped. She was relentless at worship. Look at Job. Job was stripped of everything. And God sat and watched it happen. And in both of these stories, and I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but in both of these stories, because they kept the faith, even when they were crying, even when they were wobbly, they got double return. Yes. So when you get weary, you got to push. The Bible says that Elk and I will give a worthy or double portion of the meat to Hannah after they went to Shallow. At Shallow is where she finally said, this time, when I go to Shallow, she says, Shallow is going to be my place of healing. Shallow, I'm not going to Shallow this year to just stand there. 
I'm going to walk up into limitless. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to make my prayer room my closet or I'm going to go in my powder room with little Jesse's fingers reaching under the door trying to get to me. Oh, he going to hear his mama. He going to hear his mama at shallow and I'm going to begin to pray and I'm going to begin to plead and I'm going to begin to worship and I'm not going to quit until I see God move. What's your shallow? What's your place? that you've left, that shallow. She said, I am pressing in. And at shallow is when God began to move. You know, I love this scripture that says, don't get weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. I say this all the time to y'all. Due season ain't on the calendar. But you can't get to due season if you're weary. Because when you're weary, you stop moving. When you're weary, you're too busy stalking people on social media. Y'all, my, my Facebook got hacked about 14 days ago. When I tell you, I'm counting. I'm counting. Only because I'm going to beat the devil's tail. But let me just tell you what I've learned in the last 14 days. That when you can't control something, you can be verified, you can have a two-way authenticator on it. You can have that marriage on lock and key. You can have that job where you ain't never been late a day in your life. But when life comes in and God says, oh, this is going to be the lesson I need them to get. He will let things happen just to show you, you ain't in that much control. And in order for you to go, I got to let you go through it's going through the process. When I tell you the peace I've had not seeing y'all statuses, you hear me? I don't know what none of y'all doing. Oh, God. It was a forced rest because what I discovered is sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And when you are a Holy Ghost preacher, you can discern from a million miles away. And I'm a fixer. And God said, oh, no, girl. Mm -mm. That was Hannah. Hannah got to a place where she went into prayer. And Hannah knew that nothing compares with the love of God. She had to at Shiloh. Here's where I believe God, God works it. When you get to Shiloh, that place of breaking for you, that place of peace, shallow, is the place that God can go inside of you. When you finally say, God, if you never give me a husband, I'm going to still worship you. God, if you never give me back my money, I'm going to still worship you. God, if you never give me back my car, I'm going to still worship you. God, if you, oh, he said, will you worship me and serve me even when you can't understand what I'm doing? Because if I'm letting it happen, I'm behind it. He said, and I knew that nothing compares with the love of God. While some trust in chariots and horses, she put her trust firmly in the name of the Lord. Here's a second lesson. Don't be ruled by your emotions was the first one. You can have emotions, but get your butt up. Why are you still laying in a heap of mess? Some of y'all need to deactivate your Facebook. Y'all done stalking him, stalking his ex. Why are you mad at his ex? Why are you mad at his new wife? We mad at her. Why are you mad at her? He's her headache now. Why are you mad? Sir, why are you mad at him? He, she's his headache now. Right? And I mean that in the greatest heart ever. Nothing that's ever walked out of your life is a part of your destiny, period. Period. It didn't have nothing to do with your five-finger forehead. It didn't have nothing to do with your big old thick thighs. Here's what you got to do. You got to get your heart right and stop talking about him. Yeah. Stop talking about her. Stop being mad every time your kid has to go over. Why is she taking pictures with my kids? God knows. Takes a village. Use it. 
I need dress today. Hey, Sister Connie, can you come get your stepkid? <laughs> Stop fighting a battle that ain't yours. God ain't going to leave you in the red. But until you get your heart right, you're going to stay in the red. We got to stop being mad at things that are not there for us to be mad at. You hear me? I need some help. I need a bath tonight. Y'all come get them. Some of y'all are losing your marbles over something you can't change. Ah, lesson number two. There's a difference between a closed womb and barrenness. If you look closely at different Bible translations, none of them use the term barrenness. Some said the Lord had shut her womb. God had not given her children. In other words, Hannah wasn't barren. Her womb was merely shut. So God is not, not going to give you what you want. It's just not the time to give you what you want. He's building some things in your life in order to get you to a place where he can get you right, right? And he's saying, once you get right, then I'm going to turn up speed. That's how he does it. There's a difference between a closed womb and barrenness. In other words, Hannah wasn't barren. Her womb was merely shut. The dictionary defines barrenness as someone who is incapable of producing offspring. They're sterile. Some of y'all are so driven by what you want because women are control freaks. Y'all know we are. I mean, if, if your husband don't do what you want him to do, yeah. <sighs> you call your mama, girl, come get your son-in-law. No. We got to get to a place where we realize this is just a season, not a sentence. God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to praise my way through like a fool. They are watching to see what I'm going to do. They're going to see me rise. You can throw me to the wolves all you want to, but you're going to see me rise. You're going to listen to me. You're going to see. That's just the attitude you got to have as a woman of God. And a man of God, they can throw you to the wolves. They can put you on TMZ. They can put you on Shade Room. They can put you on whatever they want to put you on. But when God is in your life and you don't let nothing steal what God has planted, he will show out. And the reason you're walking through such hell is because the more hell you walk through, the more glory for your story. Yeah. Peter made two big mistakes in dealing with Hannah. Your haters. Are, are, are making very big mistakes messing with you. Here's, here's one of hers. Pina's first mistake was she thought Hannah was barren. It's why you ain't got a clap. You know how ironic it's going to be? It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, to, y'all, when y'all walk out of this place and realize it ain't my, it, it, it ain't my circus. It ain't my circus. And all of a sudden, the people you were mad at, now you're walking up saying, here you go. Oh, you got her a whole bunch of, of roses for Mother's Day? I ain't getting her nothing. I didn't get nothing. She ain't going to get nothing. Oh, I would. I am petty like that. I am petty in, 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 in blessings. I will bless you. You hear me? Can you bless your hater? Can you pray <laughs> blessings over your hacker? Can you pray? No, I ain't praying for her, Kim. When you start, that's maturity. You hear me? Because God's letting you walk through it for a reason. Pina's first mistake was she thought, I got to hurry. Hannah was barren. There are some people who, talk, who thought you are barren. Believing that nothing good can come out of, uh, out of you. They sleeping on you. Let them sleep. Let them get their rest. And, and we mean that in the kindest way. Nothing good, people think nothing good can come out of you. They thought you will not make progress, but God will surprise them. You hear me? I'm coming up. I want the work. Look at y'all jumping in. Pina's second mistake, you ready for this? She thought repeated meanness would distract Hannah and make her lose her focus. And come after her while taking her eyes off of God. Listen to this. 
Many of us have been distracted by mean people. Women, we are petty. We get sidetracked being focused on those distractions and not the Lord. In the process, we may miss our destiny. If you, if you try responding to every mean person, every time they taunt you, you will not even have time to pray. Some of y'all are like, oh girl, that's me. That's okay. Today you got a heart check. Today you're going to change some things. Hannah's closed womb was a deliberate act of God to display his glory in the life of Hannah. To show his glory. Your delayed prosperity, your delayed breakthrough, your delayed deliverance is not barrenness, but a closed womb. Closed by God. So that when the delay is over, you will know that your breakthrough is not by your own power or might, but by the grace of God. You hear me? Here's lesson number three. Pina's agitation was ordained by heaven. I always tell y'all this. I talk about this a lot because this is what keeps all of us bound. People. People, we're just ordinary people. It was ordained by heaven. The Bible says Pina provoked Hannah. Why? She had everything. Why she be mean? The Bible says Pina and Hannah had none because she saw herself as being up in a lofty position. Pina was looking down on Hannah. That's why you better be nice to people. You don't know when you're going to need them. You can be elevated from the back of the line to the front of the line. You better be nice. You better stop being jealous. You better stop being messy. You better stop it. You hear me? She saw herself as being in a lofty position and Hannah down in the dungeon. She saw herself at an, event, at an advantage position while Hannah was disadvantaged. There are people who thought they are ahead of you, smarter than you, more anointed than you in different areas of life. But you need to know God is taking you higher. You hear me? Let them put your name in the paper. More publicity. Let them talk about you. More publicity. You stay Focused. You are running your own race. You are not in competition with anyone. And as you keep your gaze focused on Jesus, he will multiply you in Jesus' name. You hear me? What Pina didn't know was that it was God who was behind the agitation. Uh, why? I remember one time I was mad about something. And I still am hood and holy. Now I'm more holy than hood on some days. But some days I got ratchet still in there. It's just righteous, ratchet. And I'm like, God, why? Because y'all listen to me. People want what I got, but they ain't ready for what I got to walk through to get it. You hear me? And I'm like, get them, God. Get them. I'm in my prayer room stomping back and forth. Get them, God. They taking these battles. Get them, God. Take. And I heard the Lord say, how do you know they don't think they're right just like you think you're right? That did something to me because it is not my job to try to get them. It is my job to get them to him. You hear me? And so while you're over here mad because God ain't taking care of your situation, how do you know they don't think the same thing you're thinking? And it shifted me. I wasn't even mad no more. Right? Because we got to get to a place where we realize if God is allowing the agitation in your life is for a reason. All right? So agitation is an excellent Christian trait that must be developed. You want to get moved higher? Beat the agitation. Stop clapping back. You want your marriage to get better? Stop calling your mother-in-law every single time or your mother every single time y'all get in a fight. Huh? 
Sometimes you got to unfollow people in real life. Stop following that influencer that looks like she got the best life ever because it's making you bitter about yours. You ain't cooking for your husband no more because he ain't got a six-pack no more and her husband did. You see what I'm saying? Don't let your petty stop you. Don't let your petty make you pitiful. Don't let your petty put you in a pit. Today, get up. Y'all, did you notice that Hannah did not even address Pina? Woo! She my kind of girl. Oh, you ain't gonna see me come out of my character for you. Uh-uh. It ain't my problem you got character issues. It's my job to show you, Jesus. If, if Y'all, listen, when you got haters, they'll come on my, on my, on my Insta, Insta lives all the time, and they're just saying all this stuff, and people are like, get them out, get them out. And I'm like, no, let them get delivered. There's some anointing on me that will literally get the devils out of them. You hear me? Stop getting in your feelings and get into healing because there's an anointing on your life to break chains. You are the mover and the shaker for your family. Woman of God, you carry an oil. You are not broke down. You are not left over. You are not on the clearance rack. You are not a bad birdie. You are literally God's favorite. So Hannah did not even address Pina or exchange words with her. You know what she did? She bit. agitation went on year after year year after year and they went to shallow to pray year after year Hannah was not discouraged despite the delay she probably had a moment oh no it hurts you trust people probably tell your husband to choose between you or Pina. I ain't going to Shiloh. I'm not going to be put at the kid table because I can't help it that I can't have you kids. But you need to know something limitless. That there are some people you cannot get away from such as family members, colleagues, even people at church. You got to learn how to keep your focus. It's easier said than done, though, it ain't. You are the CEO of your world. You do not have to RSVP to every argument you are invited to. In fact, some of y'all need to break up with some issues. Just cancel your subscription. I ain't letting you steal my peace no more, no more. Lesson number four Pina's agitation provoked Hannah. You will probably agree with me that many of us would never pray like we pray if we don't face difficulties. <laughs> Honey, what? I can attest to this. Hannah's prayer was initiated by God who was looking for a righteous family to bless. At that time, the judgeship was coming to an end priesthood was waning as a central piece in God's communication with man and God was stepping in and here was Pina taunting Hannah being annoying generally making Hannah feel uncomfortable she was working for the devil and didn't even know it the Bible describes Pina as Hannah's Adversary. The closing of Hannah's womb was for a reason and a season. Guess what? When she finally had that oh hell no moment. Where she wasn't praying with feel sorry for me prayers. But she finally said, Oh no. I'm about to go down. 
I'm going to go shut myself away and I'm going to pray and I'm going to get my heart right and I'm going to come out of this thing and I'm not going to look like what I've been through. Y'all listen, after that, the Bible describes being as Hannah's adversary in 1 Corinthians 16, 9. The Bible talks about a great and effectual door being open and there are many adver adversaries. There's no doubt that God wants you to go through the open door, but he wants to help you deal with the adversaries before opening your eyes to see the effectual door. Otherwise, you may be attacked by the adversaries. And if you can't even handle this, how are you going to handle this? I guess what, y'all? She had a baby. I remember when I was about 21 years old and I went to the doctor and the doctor said, you're not going to have kids. And I cried. Because I was raised in United Pentecost where they said, that's what a woman does. That's what we were created for is to have babies. I was like, oh my God, am I going to have kids? And I remember that day being like, Hannah, I said, God, this is yours. This body is your body. And, it, and when you're ready for me to have a baby, I'll have a baby. A few years later, I had a baby. I'm going to tell you something. You mamas that are in here or online that want to have a baby and you can't have a baby, if you get to a place where you finally said, I ain't even trying. You know when women get pregnant? When they quit caring. See, women make things idols. You're making having that baby an idol. Every time you ain't pregnant, y'all mad, you mad at him. It ain't his fault. You got to trust God. That is your homework this week. To lay it at the feet of Jesus. I know it's hard, y'all. Especially when you're a mom. We're fixers. Men are fixers, but women are too. You gotta lay it at the feet of Jesus. I can't do nothing with this. She had a baby. Samuel came forth. Samuel was greater, more favored, and more intelligent than all the children Pina had put together. That's how God rolls. Somebody just said, well, why did God do that? Why he do that? Because he was showing out. You hear me? Those who had their breakthroughs 20 years ago think you can never catch up with them, but you're going to catch up. Those who thought you would forever remain beneath them in all areas, God, God is going to put you above them. You watch. Her child grew up as a child of favor, not just with men, but with God. You single women, stop idolizing the man. You pray more about getting a husband than you do about getting your life together. You hear me? God's going to bring them. But a lot of times we don't need them in the stage we're in. You're going to get all tore up from the floor up, dude. Because you tore up from the floor up. Got to get free so that we can live our best lives. Hannah never lost her faith. She got weary, but she kept moving. Y'all, Samuel changed Israel. Samuel was regarded as a second Moses, the deliverer and guide of the people of God at a time when there was great crisis. You hear me? Who had the last laugh? Huh? Well, Kim, that's being petty. No. God's going to vindicate. Hannah had the last laugh. You will outlast and outlaugh your adversary. Stand up on your feet, Limitless. You will outlast your adversary. Mama. Stop fighting your kids in your own flesh. Let them go. Let them learn. You know how I learned by touching the stove? You know how my boys learn touching the stove? Sometimes you got to let them touch the stove. You got to let them go be great. Let them go do whatever they feel they got to do. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to be here for you when you come back, but you're going to need me before I need you. <laughs> 
right, keep your heart right, you will outlast and outlaugh your adversary. Was there any record of Pina beyond 1 Samuel chapter 1? Huh? Y'all hear about her anymore? The end. The Bible did not even record the names of her sons and daughters. You can look like you got it all going on, but if you don't get your heart right, you can look like you can care. Listen, you can have whatever you have a following. You can have whatever you want, but God's going to expose. You got to get your heart right. When I was walking in my hardest seasons, man, four years ago, I mean, I just went through hell and I would fall apart every time something would happen. And I was on a plane going to Australia and I heard the Lord say, who do you think you are? He said, you better get it together. He said, because if you fall to this sin, I was drinking every night, wine. Jesus drank wine. And God said, that wine's above me. And he said, if you don't get it together, you're going to bring down millions of people with you. And when you get to heaven, you're going to stand before me on their behalf. Y'all, I laid on that plane like T.D. Jakes. I didn't eat. I cried. I repented. And I dealt with the areas on the inside of me that needed praise from people. Because if God can't trust you when you get here, you know, you know, when you get here or you get that husband or you get that wife and then all of a sudden you change after you get them, it's a hard issue. Right? You gotta allow God to talk to you so that He can reveal the areas of you that's sabotaging you. Because if God said it, He's gonna do it. But He is also a gentleman. He ain't gonna do it till you get your, your life right. That means paying your taxes. That means paying your tithe. That means not calling each other out of names. I know I'm sitting in y'all's laps now. You're like, girl, bye. It's getting that heart right because you ain't worth my blessing. And I'm going to pray for you all the way to the finish line. Hannah, y'all, Pina turned out to, to be just a footnote of history while Hannah was recorded as one of the headlines of history. She was remembered by God, remembered in scriptures as a virtuous praying woman who birthed a whole prophet. It did not happen when she wanted it to. But come on, mama. She persevered. And I'm here to tell you today, God is about to open your womb. God is about to open that situation. God is about to do a new thing through you and your kids. He's got to let you hit rock bottom sometime to find the rock, find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. But what I want us to do in this place today is just say, God, search my heart. Search me. Heal me. Don't let me let the penis in my life stop me. You're not for everybody. There's a whole word for you. You are not for everybody. Stop trying to get people that are not a part of your next chapter to like you. Let them go and you love. You love like God. Don't you ever even enter into a conversation and knock people down. You get to a place where when people come to talk about you, about some blah, 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 blah. yo, I am so obnoxious. You can't talk about me to people. Even my mom is like warning me because this is mama bear here. I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. I can't, I can't let it get in me. Because whatever you listen to gets in your spirit. Right? So what do you need to leave at this altar today? What do you need to let go of? Who do you need to forgive? They had to go. It had to happen. And this is just a season, not a sentence. Stop letting a season in your life define your lifetime. 
We got some Hannahs up in this place. We got some Hannahs. We got some Hannahs. And I hear the Lord saying right now, I'm revving up your engine. You ain't seen nothing yet. Your struggle is over. Everybody lift your hand. If you're in this place and you've been struggling, man, struggling with why, you forgot your why, you found yourself struggling, you've been listening to the wrong voices, you haven't been reading your Bible like you're supposed to, you ain't been praying, you've been giving CPR to dead situations. God is saying right now, lay it down. Right now, y'all, lay it down. Make a decision to lay it down. Say, Father, use me. I want to be a Hannah. I want to be used of you. I don't want to be moved by my emotions. Keep my heart right. So that when I die, I am known in this world as a game changer. Someone that's honored with a legacy. In Jesus' name, I say yes, Lord. Come on. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Say, Lord, I give you my kids. Come on, Mama. I give you my spouse. I give you my future spouse. I give you my money. Because it ain't funny. My soul says yes. Do y'all feel good? I just helped some of you today. Y'all were being Medina, Medea. He said, I need you to be a Hannah. Y'all were being a painter. Father, bless our mamas. Give strength to our mamas. Take the heavy weight and burden off of them today and give them peace. Heal our hearts, God. Let us trust you even when we can't trust you do a work in us like never before. I just heard God say, y'all gonna scare yourself. Some of y'all gonna be like, ah! Oh, I just smiled instead of clapping. That's how God gonna move. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.